Welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today, guys, where we are going to be meeting all of the noise that we've been hearing about Barca firmly head on in today's video. Because as usual, Javier Tebas, who simply cannot keep his mouth shut, has come out with yet more outrageous quotes there from the La Liga president. We've also got Real Madrid, who have joined the campaign now against Barcelona. And as a result of that, Juan Laporta has come out fighting. He promises to defend this club from what we're hearing. And in today's video, we are going to be discussing everything in detail. So get yourselves ready. Strap your yourselves in and let's do this. Because let me first of all start by setting the scene. When it comes to Real Madrid and Barcelona, their relationship, and especially now why Real Madrid's recent change in stance on the Barca Negrera case is so significant and what it means now moving forward. Because since the Super League project first emerged onto the scene, you would have to say that in recent times, Barca and Real Madrid have actually enjoyed, kind of strangely, a close relationship. Juan Laporta there and Florentino Perez have basically shared a common goal in this time. And I think for all of us fans, given the fierce rivalry that we've all been used to for many, many years between Barca and Real, it has felt weird. It has felt very eerie that these two clubs have been getting on quite well. And it almost seemed as though it was only a matter of time, really, before that friendly relationship caught fire. And well... That is exactly where we stand here today, because Real Madrid publicly announced on Sunday before our game against Athletic Club that despite their original stance on the Barca Negrera case, where they didn't seem like they were going to get involved in it, they have now confirmed they will be involved. They will appear as part of that trial, and by doing so, that completely ends any relationship that existed between these two clubs. That well and truly says, OK, we're going against you now. It is time for battle, basically. Because what we saw then straight away in the Madrid-based media this year was the cover from Marca on Monday, and the big headline there is cornered. They say that as Madrid choose to take action against Barcelona, they have backed them into a corner. And this all just feels as though it's like the beginning again. We've seen in the past, especially thinking there about Pep Guardiola's time at the club when he came head-to-head -head with Mourinho. You all remember, guys, back then simply going up against the Madrid media and simply there with the pressure that that city can bring. The speculation, the scrutiny, that was almost more intense at times than the actual matches. That is where Pep Guardiola ultimately felt burned out competing against the juggernaut that is the Madrid media and, of course, the whole of the sports media in Spain. Because what you have to know about Real Madrid is that it is at the very heart of the capital city in Spain. The influence that they have alone on the mainstream media in the country, it's enormous. The influence that Florentino Perez has over everything is also very significant. We've seen so many examples in the past when he has just got what he wanted. When he decides to paint a picture, when he's got something in his mind, it simply ends up happening and let me just make this absolutely clear. When we're hearing about this Barca Negrera case right now, when you're hearing about this situation, the timing is no coincidence. When you factor in, guys, that the final payments made to Negrera ended in 2018. That was five years ago. For five whole years, there's been an opportunity. There has been a timeline there whereby this all could have come to light. And yet it just so happens that right now, right at this very moment in the season, with Barca on the path that they're on, now it comes to light. When Barca stand nearly double digits ahead of Real Madrid in the La Liga table. With Madrid's biggest club a mile off the pace in La Liga and ahead of the Clasicos in the league now and in the Copa del Rey semi-final. Now it's emerging. Because you think back over these past two seasons when Barca have been struggling, when there was nothing to report, then Barca were slumped in second place. who we weren't able to threaten the great Real Madrid. You had Bartomeu actively destroying the club from the inside. Oh, back then, everything was rosy. There was nothing against Barca then. There was no campaigns in the media against Barca then. Everything was good then. But the difference now now is that we are on our way back in Madrid. They are firmly aware of that. We are gunning now for this league title and we finally have a president in charge of the club 
who's not just going to sit back. He's not just going to allow us to be dominated by Real Madrid. He's not scared of them. He has never been scared of Real Madrid. He's never been scared of Florentino Perez. And just ask yourselves, why are the fake banknotes that we're seeing, that we saw unveiled at the Bernabeu, why do they come with Juan Laporta's face on it? Was Laporta the president who was named by the prosecutor's office in this Negrera case? No, he wasn't. Laporta's name was nowhere to be seen. They named Sandra Rassay. They named Josep Maria Bartomeu. They did not name Laporta. So why then is Javier Tebas asking for Laporta to resign as the Barca president? Let's not forget here, this is the same Javier Tebas who defended Bartomeu, who came out publicly after Bartomeu's reign as Barca president, and he openly said... He did nothing wrong. He did not make any mistakes. Javier Tebas said it was all because of COVID. Bartomeu was not at fault. This is the same man who allowed Bartomeu to destroy the club under his own watch. But now when it comes to Laporta, now when it comes to a president at Barca who's not going to be bullied, who's not going to be pushed around, now Tebas can't stop talking. Now the Madrid media sit up and they want to take notice of Barca again. That's why we're seeing public pressure. That's why we're seeing calls on Laporta to resign from his position. Make no mistake at all, guys. There is so much more to this right now than meets the eye, and we cannot cannot let them win. And this is where the man himself now certainly arrived on the big occasion yesterday. Juan Laporta there was speaking in front of all the captains of Barcelona, not only in terms of the football team, but right throughout the club. It was a meeting there of solidarity. It was a meeting there of defiance. And Laporta stood up and said, I cannot wait to face all of the scoundrels who are staining our badge. He said Barca is a club of values. And I don't just say that to look good, but because values really are a fundamental part of our sporting excellence. He said that is why Barca is admired. That is why Barca is recognised throughout the world. And then Laporta said, it just so happens now that some, motivated by envy, try to erode our reputation with campaigns carried out that are designed to hurt us. Recently, there have been ferocious attacks to stain our badge, which have nothing to do with reality. They are attacking our club. And then it was extraordinary because the president of Barca, Juan Laporta, then started to tear up. There was tears in his eyes. There was emotion there to be seen. He started to cry. But he said, Barca fans, you can't listen to these rumours. And he said, don't think that I'm getting emotional out of weakness. I am emotional because I can't wait to face the scoundrels that are staining our badge. We will defend this club with all of our strength. And I think those words from Laporta there, they were incredibly powerful. Not only the emotion, but what he was saying. He seemed energised. He seemed like somebody there that didn't feel backed into a corner, that didn't feel under pressure. This is somebody who actively wants to come out to defend this club, to defend our honour. And that is why I am so glad that we have him. There are many, many presidents in the past at Barca who would have cowered in the corner, who would have been actively helping and aiding this campaign against the club but not Laporta. He would not let that happen. And I just think it's extraordinary. And actually, it illustrates the points that Laporta are making here. The way that things are being portrayed in Spain right now. The way that Barca is being treated in the public domain. Because let's move on to words from the league's president, let's not forget. La Liga president, Javier Tebas. Yesterday, he came out and said this, talking here about El Clasico and speaking about VAR. He said El Clasico is a rare event. He said, we have to study VAR more broadly. We have to see if the people out there are the right people. There is incredible anxiety amongst all clubs during matches. And we have to find solutions as soon as possible. Now, that comes after, of course, Barca on the weekend. VAR intervened correctly, we have to add, in our game there for our goal. And, of course, for the incorrect goal from Athletic Club. But it almost seemed as though here, Javier Tebas just wanted to place some doubt in the mind of the people. It's as simple as that here. To mention El Clasico, then to say VAR needs to be studied more. We need to find the right people. There's anxiety right now. It was almost as though ahead of such a big game, with such scrutiny placed on Barca right now, he wanted to make it absolutely clear. 
oh, there's some doubt right there right now. He's implying something without actually saying it. And then he goes on to say the only club in La Liga that can buy Kylian Mbappe It's Real Madrid. I would love to see him play in La Liga. Now, this is something that Tebas, who should be completely impartial, that should not there even have an opinion on these things, he says this on a weekly basis. He tells everybody every week, Real Madrid are the only ones that can get Mbappe, and I would love to see him here. What he actually means there is... I'd love to see Mbappe at Real Madrid. I don't even know why he bothers hiding it anymore. This guy has not even hid the fact that he is a Real Madrid fan. And this is just what the club are dealing with right now. This is just what Barca, every single day, week in, week out, we hear this from the president of the league, who just talks non-stop, who constantly puts Barca down in the media. And that is why I do want us to clarify the Barca Negrera case. That is why I do want us, whatever it takes, to clear our name. Because although everybody right now, La Liga, Real Madrid. They want to act as though we've already been proven guilty, that these allegations have been proven in a court of law. They have not. At this stage, Barca have done nothing wrong. And I trust in Juan Laporta to protect this club at all costs. So that right there, guys, was indeed an update right now on what we are seeing. I think many of us Barcelona fans, we are frustrated by what we're hearing every single day in the media right now. Like I say, at the weekend, there was nothing wrong with the decisions in our game. We won fair and square against Athletic Club, but you just knew that after that game, there was going to be a whole new campaign. There was going to be so much talk about it, and it is absolutely relentless right now. And that is why Laporta feeling emotional, being so ready to fight these campaigns. Campaigns. It is very, very reassuring for us Barcelona fans. Please do let me know, guys, your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you make of it all right now? And given as well that we are in the week of El Clasico, what a game that is going to be on Sunday. It is war out there, and we have to be ready for it. I will see you soon, guys. Thank you indeed for all of your fantastic support. Let's stick together. Let's stay firmly united. And I will be seeing you very, very soon. But until next time, as always, Vizca El Basa.